Well, it's been a couple of months since I last saw you. And I know. So tell us about, I guess, we, we last saw you guys when you were leaving the airport. And mm -hmm. so it's been a journey, it sounds like. So Very much. Mm -hmm. well, what's it been like? It has been great. Really, it has. You know, we've learned a lot of things. We've done a lot of things. You know, we've met wonderful people. We've stayed in wonderful places. We started in Veracruz. We ended up in Cordova, Veracruz. And then Katie got stuck under the Hague here in the United States. So by being stuck, you know, we just sat there. So we just, just I just got it one day and I said, let's get on the computer. Let's get a hold of the embassy in Mexico City. So we called for two days, just numbers, just all day. And we had a doctor helping us. We lived with a doctor and his wife. So he got on the phone and they just called numbers and numbers and finally a lady answered. And she put us in contact with uh, Jack McCarty. And he's just done flips for Katie. It's just been great. Because in Mexico, Katie's not under the Hague. Uh, and at 18, she's her own person. And while in Mexico, you know, we did a lot of things. In, in um, Cordova, she, she got her register, her electric ID, she got her driver's license, and she got put in the census. And the minute she was put in the census, her files became available. So, you know, she became a girl with a the country then. So, but Jack, we got an email yesterday. She's been, her I-130's been approved. And there it will go to Juarez. And that's where she will end up. Now, kind of explain what the I-130 is for people who haven't had to navigate the system. <laughs> An I-130 is where you apply for a visa. And that starts your process and you either are accepted or denied. And Katie is in California. Her immigration papers are still sitting in California from the United States, but we filed in Mexico. So her papers, I'm not for sure, but I think they went straight to Washington, D.C. And from there, they looked at her case, and so we're just waiting on a date, and she'll end up in Juarez. And when she gets to Juarez, she will end up with a visa, She'll come out of there, apply for, she will get a green card within about a month, and along with that, she'll get a social security number. And then from her social security number, she will apply for residency. And by law, it takes three to five years. And Katie has five because she's applying in Juarez. And, but she'll be in the process of being a citizen. And so she'll be able to, to come home? Oh yeah, she will come home with a visa out of Juarez if there's no bumps, and he promises there's no bumps. <laughs> yeah. What was it like for you getting that email? I mean, it's been, it's been years in the making. Fifteen. Fifteen years. It was great. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, some people are going to wonder, why are, you, why are you able to sit on this couch today? You left with her, but you're back in the United States. Y'all had mm -hmm. sort of a family emergency, is that right? Yes, we had a family emergency. But my son was in an accident, so I had to fly home. Katie can't move, you know, she, Katie can't move until she gets papers. So I left her with a family, with a friend. And just luckily, her boyfriend was coming home to go back to school. So he flew home with me, but he got so stressed he went back to be with Katie because, you know, we did leave Katie alone. And, you know, anywhere in Mexico is not safe. And he has a grand house there. That nobody he lived in eight years, and we got the house ready. Me and Katie's lived there. Um, we're in a gated wall, an eight-foot wall all around us. So we're pretty safe where we are, as safe as you can be in Mexico. Are you worried about Juarez? I'm terrified about Juarez. I really am. But, you know, Katie wants to do this, so she's going to do it. I mean, she's come so far. Yep. Um, you kind of talked about the reality of what life is like in Mexico in some of those mm -hmm. areas. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Some of the well, you know, you Mexico is an amazing place. It's a very dangerous place, and you're aware of that because every home has steel on their windows. You go through steel gates. There are no doorknobs. There's no entries into but one way, one way out. But it's a, an amazing place, and we've done a lot of things, and, you know, Everybody has really rallied around us and helped. But where we're at, we're very primitive. 
we have water every other day. You know, we have phone service. Sometimes we don't. It's very primitive where we're at, but it's great. And we live in a farm community. So when they clear a farm, a, a cornfield, um, they always have a festival. So every night of the world you can go. You go to the plaza every night of the world if you want to. And there, you know, you just, you just visit with everybody for the day. And there's hardly no TVs. There's no radios. So it's just people sitting, visiting, and talking about their day and what they're going to do tomorrow, which, you know, we don't do that here. And like me and Katie and Arthur, we just sit for hours and talk. I mean, you don't have, you know, but you're busy. You know, you have water every other day. You have to wash. You wash by hand. You hang clothes out. So you're, and you cook outside. Very few kitchens have, you cook outside. So you're just constantly, it's not like I'm sitting on this couch. There I'd be up doing something, getting ready for the next day. Yeah. Kind of a hard life. Very hard, but you know we'll be walking, and here'll come a man on a donkey with his with his uh, corn, no saddle, just tit tit tit. Or you'll see an ox pulling a wagon with the family. It's been in the fields all day. I mean, it's like you're back in time. But Mexico is the most amazing place. Re a culture shock for Katie? Has it put it sort of? I mean, well, when we've, of what it means, to, what she's working for to, to live here. I mean, what has that been like for her? It has really been a culture shock. The first, Katie was not good until we hit where we are now. Pebble, she was not good. Like, she would cry every night. But, you know, she just missed her life so much. Then we got to a home where we were by ourselves because we've lived with families. You know, we've never been on our own. So when we got to Arthur's, even though Arthur wasn't there, we were still in a home, you know, making it good, and it became our home. We picked Arthur up. We were two weeks in Mexico City, and we picked Arthur up there, and he went with us. But like I say, his dad's grandpa's had a heart attack. So, but Arthur stayed fast with us, and he's been amazing. He has turned hoops for me and Katie. He's made everything there just perfect. And he never lets us walk on the outside. He holds her hand. He puts his arm around us when we go to town. You know, he's he's just an amazing young man. And he's going with her to work. Yes. Yep. I called a while ago to make sure. Yep. Looking back at the beginning of May when, when you guys had to say goodbye, yeah. did you think this day would come? Were you sure that it would, that the process would be that she could return? Or what's that like? Well, you know, we left with no guarantee, and me and Katie knew that in reality. But we had a mindset that if it doesn't work, we'll make it down there because Katie don't have a life here. You know, she knows that. But in Cordova, we went to the university in Cordova. They have this fabulous university. And, you know, they, Katie impressed them so much because she's so much us, but yet she's so much Mexican. Because I always kept Katie with her people. From day one, she grew up with us and her friends, her Spanish. And so she has a lot, and Pueblo has a great university. They, we talked about Pueblo. So if Katie didn't get her papers, we'd already had a mindset here. I was to sell everything I had. We would just start over down there. That is not what we wanted to do. And the more we stayed there, trust me, that is not what we wanted to do. But you do what you have to do. And to bring her back with no papers, that was senseless because it's like she said, she couldn't work, she couldn't travel, her life would just be stuck. In Mexico, she had all the opportunities she needed, you know, so. Aside from not being Yeah, there. yeah. Um, I guess what, what's the overarching message here that, I mean, Katie, from the beginning of talking to her, it was, you know, we're going to persevere, we're going to get this taken care of, we're going to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Is that still the message that... Uh, oh, very much, very much. And, you know, uh, Katie appreciates everything everybody's done for her. You know, we're putting out flowers this week for Katie. Uh, and I know maybe two months at the most, Katie should be home. Yeah, with papers. And so it really is if you, I mean, if you persevere. <laughs> if you just... Because, you know, we've had so many stumbling blocks, even in Mexico. You know, we had, you know, people trying to quit us, people saying it's not going to work. 
uh, government officers calling and say, you know, it's impossible. But you know what? It wasn't impossible. I just knew it wasn't. And when they told us that we knew that they would not take Katie out of the Hague. And the Hague is really a Hague is an international adoption, like you go into a country and bring a, kid, a child out. Well, Katie wasn't, we didn't do that. But, and she had to be a resident of the United States or of Mexico. Katie wasn't a resident of either. She had to be adopted before she was 16. Okay, Katie was. She was adopted at 14. Took us 10 years to do that, but we didn't stop till we got it done. So I thought if I can get that hurdle, I can just keep on. But yeah, she's, you know, and Katie's so appreciative, you know. And she misses home. She's tell everybody I miss home. <laughs> I want to come home. I want to go to college. I want to go back to my job. And yeah. She wants to live the American dream. She wants to go, just come home. You know, because this, there is not her life, you know. Never has been. No, but Arthur grew up there. He is from California, but he grew up in that little town. So that is, you know, he's very adapt. So he's made it very easy for me and Katie to be get adjusted. He makes sure we go to only the events that's safe, you know, and he's always looking. He's always hovering. He's just a hover, hovering over us, you know, so that, you know, he's just been amazing. He really has. And Arthur has put his life on hold. He didn't go to school this semester, you know. He, he just put his life on hold, too. And when I talked to him, I say, Arthur, are you homesick? He said, I'm so homesick, Miss Tip. But now I'm not coming without Katie. <laughs> I'm not coming without Katie. And he's in a mindset, too. If she don't get it, we just start over, you know. And he's in that same mindset. But right now, there, it, there shouldn't be a reason that she's not able to come home. No, because Jack McCarty is the one that's helped us. He would even email Katie like at 6 in the morning when he'd get up, think of something. He would put it, on, put it in there for Katie. He promised us when we left Mexico, the last time we seen him in the embassy, he said, Miss Tidwell, I will not send you down there with the one bump. I will not. When I send you for that I-30, you know the light's green and it'll stay green till you come out of there. So I think Jack well, is true to his word. I think when, you know, the process is started. And I, th I hope by the end of the week, we will have a date for her to hit Warriors. That is very scary for me, but Katie's very brave. So even, she said, even mom, if Arthur can't go, I'm going. I said, well, just go for it, girl. But you know, she's 18. And you know, you can't keep them young, you know, forever. And she wants this so bad. And you know, there's so many negative comments. You know, I've even had a man tell me since I've been home, why did y'all get on TV and say she wasn't from a country? She's from Mexico. That's true. But Mexico didn't recognize her because her, everything was sealed for Katie. And the only way it was open is through the census. You know, we had her birth certificate. It took it. She got her birth certificate in 2011. But it wasn't registered, and we, it took us two hours just to get a passport because they kept calling. They couldn't find it. And finally, I just told the man there at the, at the embassy in Little Rock, I said, look, we don't have time. And, and Katie had a, on her website, you know, with her papers, I said, just link on to that. And look, we're headed to Mexico. We have to get her out of the country by May the 5th. And you know what? They give her a passport for one year. An hour and a half talking, but we got her passport. But nothing, none of her records were, it was like she never existed there. Because, she can't uh -uh. immigrate here until she exists there. Yeah. And the reason for her adoption was to make her a person. Uh, you know, we had went to immigration and they kept saying, you know, she didn't exist. And finally a lady in Homeland Security said, well, you need to adopt her. And I said, well, how am I going to do that? She said she has to be a person for us to work with. Right now she's nothing. She's just like the air. So I said, okay. 10 years we got her adopted. And we did that before she was 16. And that's one of the stipulations in Hague. You have to be adopted before you turn 16. She was adopted at 14. So, you know, it's just been a journey. And we're not through. We're not through, she gets home. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? 
No, other than she just thanks everybody for their support. Uh, there is a, a fund set up at the Diamond Bank for Katie, and it's under the care of Patsy Fox, and it's a Brian Katie home. Uh, if anybody wanted to, you know, donate for her, that would be great. That's just a support system for, you know, because everybody here is ragged around Katie, and nobody knows what to do to help her, you know? And so we thought, well, this is the only way that, you know, if you just drop a dollar in it, you know, you can say, oh, I brought that little girl home. Yeah. But, yeah. But she is so ecstatic. She said she didn't go to bed this morning till 6 o'clock. <laughs> 6 o'clock. Well, imagine just the nerves. Oh, yeah. And the excitement. Yeah.